So if you had asked Newton, how do you reconcile your science with your religion? I don't think he would have understood the question. <laughs> A TV NUPES desembarcou no Congresso Internacional de História da Ciência e Tecnologia, na UFRJ. Nós entrevistamos vários pesquisadores que estão entre os principais nomes na área de História da Ciência e Religião. Você confere agora uma das entrevistas que fizemos. Many people say that science is materialistic. Um, that science is anti-Christian or anti-religious. Uh, what do you think about this? Well, I think it's very dangerous talk because when we use the word science today, it covers many different facets of thinking about the world, of scientific practice, different scientific methods, Really, from the early 19th century, uh, those who've seriously thought about this have been aware that different sciences have different methodologies. Using the single word science, which once in the past just meant knowledge or an organized body of knowledge, to use that single word to try to capture all the many different sciences and all the many different practices involved in those sciences can be very loose talk. Now, it is very convenient for scientists, and I understand this perfectly, when they are addressing a public audience to convey something of the nature of science. It is very convenient to talk about the scientific method. It's a way of educating people to appreciate what there is in science, which is rigorous, um, it's empirical, it's based on new research, it's progressive, all those things. And reference to a scientific method can help to get that message over. But the notion that science is, say, materialistic, that science is this, anti-Christian, science is that, that is not a helpful use of, of the word. There are scientists who are anti-Christian, who are materialistic, who are, uh, well, who hold any different views you care to mention. But somehow, well, philosophers use the word hypostatize, hypostatize, to turn science into a thing. Yeah. And they do the same with religion. A lot do. Philosophers try to, as, as I say, help us not to make that mistake. But, but a lot of people talk about religion as if is there is a thing, and loose talk about conflict between science and religion epitomizes that very crude kind of language. There is this thing called science. There is this thing called religion, and they're somehow in conflict. Peter Harrison, who is speaking at this conference, has written a fine book on how the words science and religion have changed their meanings over hundreds of years. And how until the second half of the 19th century, it would have seemed very strange to talk about a conflict between science and religion because the two words did not mean what they now mean today. And of course in the 17th century, which was the period of the scientific revolution, um, figures like Isaac Newton were doing what they described as natural philosophy. What we see in their work as science was understood at the time as a branch of philosophy. So if you had asked Newton, how do you reconcile your science with your religion? I don't think he would have understood the question even. Um, so I hope that's a clear answer, but we need to be very critical about the use of language. I sometimes hear it uh, 
said, you know, we we need to have dialogue between science and religion. It's one of the four categories in the relationship between them, as Ian Barber, and he's been very influential in this, uh, described in several of, of his books. But really, you can't have dialogue between science and religion. You can have dialogue between people, and some of those people may be scientists, some of those people may be religious, some may be both. Yeah. And this, I think, is another of the great weaknesses of the the notion that science and religion are necessarily in conflict. Of course, there have been many conflicts, but the notion that they are inevitably in conflict seems to me unhelpful because there are so many, even some of the really great scientists, um, have recognised that, that they hold beliefs that would be appropriate to call religious.